Hello, this is Roland. Today I want to read you something from some of my favorite people. Let's start with Madame Guillon, a, a mystic. She lived a long time ago, and she um, she understood how to become still and how to pull within in such a way that you're a little closer to the good that comes from within and a little distant to things on the outside that are not good or that wish to pull you into them. You know, problems, people have a way of getting under your skin, don't they? You've heard that expression. They have a way of getting under your skin. And, uh, and so there has to be a way that you can go out in the world and do your thing without being impinged upon by things. So, listen to what Madame Rion says in her little book, Experiencing God Through Prayer. That's the English translation of her book. It was written in French. It was written a long time ago, over 300 years ago. Chapter 4, The Reward of Silence. She says, You are now ready to know about another aspect of prayer, which I will simply call the prayer of faith and stillness. After you've been meditating in the Word and praying it out to God for some time, you will gradually find how easy it is to come into His presence. You will remember other scriptures with less difficulty. Prayer has now become easy, sweet, and delightful. You have now found, dear one, the true way of finding God, and that, and that his name is an ointment poured forth. She's quoting from the Song of Solomon. Now I want you to pray a little differently. You must now begin to use your faith and courage without being disturbed at the difficulties you may encounter. First, as soon as you come into the presence of God, remain in respectful silence for a little while. Remain there in his divine presence without being troubled about a subject for prayer. Simply enjoy God. When you feel a release, you may proceed in prayer. If, however, there remains a tender tug at your spirit to simply stay quiet in his presence, by all means do so. Cease all activity, lest God's presence is diminished by your activity. So that's very beautiful. She says, if, however, there, is, there remains a tender tug at your spirit, to simply stay quiet in his presence, by all means do so. Well, that's really nice. So let's talk about the prayer of silence. She uses the term prayer, um, but what she really means is coming into the presence of God. And you do so in silence. See, God doesn't need your wordy prayers. Often your wordy prayers, they come from down below from your emotions and your intellect. And in the sense they're separated or very much in the very real way are separated, unless they have understanding in them. They're separated from understanding and from love and from God. Have you, have you heard people that just talk and talk and talk and there's nothing there? Well, that's basically what most of us do. So, to be silent means to cease your efforts. And see, one of your efforts is to verbalize everything. You must learn to go through life without saying, that's a tree, there's a chair, there's the clock, this is a nice day, today is a, not a nice day, she's a nice per Go through life without naming everything. Just silently watch. And cease all your efforts as she said cease all your efforts to name things to figure things out to try to make anything happen see 
your ambition, even to try to make yourself good or make yourself holy or make yourself innocent or something like that, it's just another effort that interferes with just sitting in God's presence, letting his light shine through you. Let it do the work. God's light will do the work. It's like hanging a dirty towel out in the, the bright sunshine. All you have to do is just put it there and the light does the work of making it fresh. Do you understand? So one of the great lessons that you have to learn is to do less. The less you do, the more happens, but only if you're connected. Now, how do you get connected? See, if you're not connected, then you just sit around doing nothing because you're afraid to do something or because everything you've done has never worked out or because you're, you don't have the energy to do something, you're all drained. That's totally different from just waiting upon God and sitting quietly but gleaning something from that light. See, it changes you. Then when you're done with this, with this, with meditation, then you get up, you feel refreshed, and then you go out in the world and everything's a little brighter and you see a little more. And you understand a little more and you have realizations and insights and all of this came from within through none of your efforts. It all comes from within. So to the extent that you can stay close to that within, that's the secret. So now do you understand what silence means? It means being still, ceasing your efforts to figure things out, to try to make things happen, to impress anybody, even God, and your efforts to rush around and do things trying to do things or trying not to do things. Just sit quietly. It's one of the great lessons you have to learn. And you can, you can, you can listen to Madame Guillon because she knows what she's talking about. Get the little meditation that I have. It's very nice. It's only eight minutes long. It teaches you how to sit quietly and stand back from your thoughts. Stand back in God's inner light. You see how nice that is? And that's all you have to do. Now, the mystics are always talking about that. And so they, they understood something, the true mystics. But see, you have to become a mystic. You have to, you have to become an extension of the Creator. And that begins when you learn to sit quietly and let him flow into you and change you and welcome that. Instead of rushing around and, and with as an ego, trying to make things happen or trying to prove something to other people. So you have to beware of anything that's not simple and pure. You. You know, you can even catch yourself saying things, and, and as you say it, if you have beginning to have some a little bit of understanding, awareness, if you're beginning to have some awareness from your practice of the meditation, you'll say something and you'll realize that it's empty, or it's untimely, or the energy is wrong, it's, it's too strong, or it's selfish, it was time for your benefit and not for theirs. Something about it. It's just not quite right. You'd be better off to say nothing. And do nothing. See? So that's step number one. Say nothing. Do nothing. And be a nothing. But be a nothing of God. See? His light will humble you. He'll make you see that all of your efforts and your striving and He'll make you see that it's all just selfish. See, no matter how you try to make it look noble, it's selfish. And then, and then you become a nothing for a while and just be content to be a nothing, but a nothing that is now walking in God's light and seeing and realizing some things and, and uh, making fewer mistakes and not getting so upset and 
calming down and see then you become a something with time you begin to express your talents and your abilities and gifts that he gives you he will you he will find a way for you to express them and a place for you to say them and a time and so on just wait then don't rush out to try to make it happen either see timing is important so the great lesson you have to learn is how to, is to be still with but luckily the meditation teaches you how to do that otherwise you don't know how it teaches you how and uh, it's beautiful.